All right, here we are at the Platts booth, and one of the brands that Platts imports into Japan here is Dragon from China. So Dragon makes a lot of interesting and nicely detailed World War II tank kits, and not just World War II, but other tank kits as well. So actually, I think this is the first time I've heard about this one coming out here. They're calling it this the Neos Market, and this is the Panzerkampfwagen III, and this is in the Os M version, as, as it would be seen Os at... Os M version <laughs> at Kursk in 1943. So quite nicely detailed, I gotta say. They've got a nice exploded version here at the bottom for you to see. So it looks like this is going to be, they're calling it the Neo Track. Maybe that's new for Dragon. I've never heard of the, ne the, the Neo Track. I mean, Dragon has their usual uh, Dragon, the, I think it was called DS Track, which actually you can see that here. That's kind of this. Uh, it's not. It's 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 kind of a soft, softer type plastic type of thing. So usually a lot of dragon kits come with this type of track, but this uh, new Neo Smart Kit uh, Panzerkampfwagen III comes with this Neo Track thing, which looks like a link in length type of track. So you've got the long sections and you've got the short sections. So you don't have to put each individual link together. You just kind of put together the dif the different individual or the different parts together. So new tool. So yeah, we got some a number of new tool stuff thing here. Panther D, so we got a Panther D coming out, and that's going to be a two-in-one Panther Panther term. And that's going to have the DS track. It shows that on the corner there. We got some new boxings of their M4 Sherman kit with the in the 105 Howitzer version and as com composite whole PTO version. So some different versions of the Sherman kit on the way, as well as some other, an M7, the M7 Priest we got, M132, we got M113 M1, coming on over here. Quite interesting, some inner detail there on that, uh, on that M132. People. And we got the M M60 era version coming on over here, so that's kind of interesting. Okay, so I really like this guy here. I, I actually have bought two of the previous versions of this version, but now we're getting a new version. They're calling it the T1E1. I think it was just called the M6 before. I'm just, I mean, just on the spot of the moment, my, my memory doesn't, doesn't work correctly. But this is a prototype American heavy tank from the Second World War. And a three-in-one version, so I'm guessing we're going to be able to build some different versions. Hopefully, although I don't, I think there was a little bit of in inaccuracy with as regarding the track, if I remember correctly, from the original version. So I'm not sure if they fixed any of the inaccuracies of that version previously, but it still looks like a cool kit. And really, aside from actual like tank fans, nobody's really going to notice the, the difference. So here we got some Tigers. So Dragon has had the uh, Tiger 1 kit around for a while. It looks like we're getting a new boxing of the Tiger 1. This is a Normandy 1944 version. So. We get 007, so we got the James Bond Tiger One, of course, but James Bond would have been driving a Churchill tank and not a Tiger One, unless he stole the Tiger One and painted his 007 on it. That would that would actually make an interesting movie. World War II James Bond, he steals a Tiger tank from Germany and then goes on some kind of assault. That's interesting stuff coming out from Dragon. Hobby Nunu has some new stuff on display here at the Platts booth as well. So I've kind of been interest, quite interested in these some of these kits that Hobby Nunu has been coming out with re recently. They've been doing some some fantastic work, it looks like, and they are not stopping. We've got a new Audi R A L M S version coming on the way, and they've they've got that one showing here. There we go. Looks quite nice. Just I mean, looking at the interior detail and the inside, you can see there's a fan behind the radiator. If you look down into the hood. And the engine, I do not think this is going to be a full engine kit. It looks like it's kind of just a, a little bit of a curbside, not the full engine detail, but it does have like the upper half of an engine at least in here, so you will have some engine detail. It's not completely devoid of engine detail. But what's in, more interesting from here on the bottom as well is we've got some new prototype stuff. So we've got a not, Nissan Datsun 280ZX, and this is the IMSA ver, racing version. So they used to race these cars in America as well as the RX-7, the 253i GR. Now, I, I'm pretty sure I have actually seen this real car at Mazda when I used to work there a long time ago. And we also have a BMW M1 E26 GR5 version. So I'm a fan of the M1. I'm just a fan of these old IMSA Racing Series cars because that's when car racing was interesting for me. So a lot of interesting new stuff. Oh, also can't forget the BMW M8 
GTE version coming, and this is going to be a new tool as well. So all these kits are hopefully coming out from Hobby New New at some point, although it just says there's no release dates on. There's a release date for the R8, and that's going to be out in July for 4,000 yen only, but for the M8 and the IMSA cars at the bottom, there's no release date set. So hopefully they'll come out at some point, but at this point, we're not sure. Another import from Platts is these new Polar Light Star Trek kits from one of my favorite new TV series that's on the air currently, Star Trek Discoveries. These are going to be snap fit kits, and we're getting one of the Shenzhou, and we're getting one of the namesake ship, the Discovery. These actually, just seeing them here in person, they actually look quite nice. And I'm probably, after seeing them here at the show, I held off on pre-ordering them when they went up on the sh went up on the side originally, but seeing them here at the show, they actually look quite nice. So I might end up picking these up after all. Just looking at that Discovery, it's a beautiful looking ship, the Shenzhou. It's a smaller, smaller ship, but it still looks fantastic. It's only painted in prime gray at the moment, but both of these ships, I gotta say, look quite nice. All right, so here's something else that I have not heard about prior to this show, and this is going to be a 1,500 scale version of the Enterprise. So this looks like this looks like the Enterprise as seen in the Discovery, not the original series, and not that uh, and not the J.J. Abrams and not the J.J. Abrams Star Trek series, but from Discovery Enterprise. So that's quite quite cool looking. So I might end up having to pick that one up as well. Aoshima booth time. All right, so first up, now we, you probably don't remember because it's, gosh, been over two years, I think, since I covered one of these. Aoshima has this line of easy snap together cars in one thirty second scale. So I built the very first one that they released, which was a Suzuki Hustler, which is a red K car that they only sell here in Japan. But in the two years since I built that car, they've started to release a lot more of these 30 second scale snap cars and we got some new ones that are also coming on the way as well so if we can take a look at that so we've got the chr this up here on the left so this is kind of a a bit of a popular car at the moment here in japan i've seen a number of them on the roads i'm guessing they're probably also quite popular in america although i would have no idea it's interesting it's really cool looking kind of sporty suv crossover suv type vehicle so that's interesting. These are going to be out in July, and they're really not that expensive. 1,500 yen about, so really quite cheap actually for what you get. Now another car that I'm looking forward to that they have coming out on the way is going to be the famous GTR. So I believe this version of the GTR uh, originally came out around 2000 and Gosh, it's been more than 10 years, I think, since that GTR originally came out. 2008, I want to say. I might be wrong on this, but it's been out for quite a while, and they're still making it, and they're still selling these new GTRs. And we're going to get the GTR in this 132nd scale snap line. And the car next to it is from Suzuki, and this car is quite a new car act here on the roads in Japan. This is actually one, another one of those Kenosha cars. In America, we called this the Samurai, so they have like a new version of the Samurai that's coming out, but here they're calling it the Jimny, and it's actually always been named the Jimny here in Japan. This is the K version, so it doesn't have the fender flares, it doesn't have the 1.5 liter engine, so this is only the 660cc engine. All these kits don't have engines at all in them, because they're just kind of curbside kits, as you say, no detail on the inside, just detail on the outside, and snap together, so that's quite interesting. So we have other versions of these 30 second scale snap kits that they have been releasing. We've got the Toyota 86 or Hachiroku as it is called here in Japan. They look quite snazzy. These are going to be out in, these colors are going to be out in May. I thought they already had released it, but I guess, oh, they've already released previous versions, previous colored versions of this. And here's a cool one, actually take a look over here at this one, if you will. So this is the Toyota 2000 GT. Now this is a really, really rare car. It was made by Toyota in partnership with Yamaha in the late 60s. And actually a convertible version of that 2000 GT was featured in a James Bond movie. I forget the name of the which one it was in at the moment. But actually, that white one, I, as rare as it might be, I actually saw one of those 
at a service area here in Japan this morning Dave. on the way coming here to Shizuoka. So Dave, if you can include one of my pictures that I took of that 2000 GT that I one. found on the road. One, I took a few pictures, I guess one, you could say. Few. I took a few pictures. I mean, it's such a rare car. New tool, another new tool car. It's a Japanese taxi, which I know lots of fans in foreign countries have been dying for this car to come to market in kit form. Right? 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 Guys, you've been, everybody's been dying for this car, maybe, maybe not, but hey, it is a very interesting looking car. It's, although this isn't even the most common taxi that I see here in Japan, usually it's a four-door sedan looking thing, so I have seen a few of these around on the road, so I have actually seen them. I believe I've seen them, but quite a, quite a, a bit of a rare car. They've got a service manual for this thing here too. You could open it up and look at it, but I don't think you're actually supposed to maybe open that up here. It says do not touch. Don't mind us. It is quite interesting. It's got some kind of a little bit of interior detail going on. So we got some other new releases on the way from Aoshima. Mostly stuff that's been released before, but some, some of it's coming with new parts here to build it as a police cruiser, as we are seeing here on the camera. Oh, we've got to cover that one over there. That, that's a quite a sexy one in the corner there. Yeah, there we go. Here it was called the Estima here in Japan, but in America this was called the Previa. And this body style, I believe, was the last Previa that they sold in America. What's interesting about the Previa van is that it's actually a mid-engine car. So the engine's not in the front, the mid-engine's not in the back. The driver and the passenger are actually kind of sitting on top of the engine. It's underneath the both of those seats, which actually, if you ever do a service, if you're ever working in a Toyota service center and you have one of these come in for service, you're actually kind of kicking yourself, oh my gosh, I do not want to work on one of these things. A little bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, still, they're kind of fun cars to drive, cool cars to look at. Old 1990s style Toyota minivans. I wonder how many of those still exist in the wild. I think they still sell Estebas here in Japan, but no longer can you buy the Previa in America, sadly, unfortunately. All right, so we got some Dekotora. Reiwa, so brand new Reiwa. This is, I think this was actually the first Reiwa product that went up for pre-order on our site after they announced the new name of, uh, what do you call it, the new, the new era, the new Japanese era Reiwa. So we got some new decals. No idea. Well, we got Heisei. I guess Showa. I guess this is just showing all the names of the previous eras on the truck here. It's kind of interesting. I have to wonder if there's actually a truck that's painted like this out in the wild somewhere. Maybe not. Maybe this is just an Aoshima original. It says this is going to be out in June for 6,000 yen. So just around $60 or 55 US dollars. And over here we've got a full corner of Initial D cars. So this this is one of my favorite animes actually. I probably watch this one maybe more than any other anime to be honest. I just love this car series. We got uh, the famous Hachiroku and all of... We've got the RX-7 from the Red Suns. Cool looking stuff. It looks like some of this might actually be coming with some new parts. There. This Actually yeah they did have... This is the, the 11. Another Hachiroka. This one is the fixed headlight version, and then we also have the fixed headlight version over there as well. They do have the pop-up, the one that Takumi drove with the pop-up headlights. They have that version as well. This is one of those interesting cars where they actually had two different versions that you could buy, in Japan anyway. I think in America they only had the pop-up headlight version. They did not have the 11 with the fixed headlights available, so... In Japan at least you had a choice for which headlight version you wanted to build, or buy. Here we have at the Fine Molds booth. Now, they have actually released these 170. Hachiri Junen. <laughs> Ooh, Hachiri Junen. Has it been? Has it already been that long? They've actually already released these uh, Zero Fighters as part of a magazine kit type thing. So when you would buy some model graphic magazines a couple of years ago, they had to buy two months worth. One half, one issue would come with half of the kit, and the other issue would come with the other half of the kit. And these Fine Mold Zero kits were only available 
with those magazine special packs at that time. But finally, after after how many years has it been since they first released the first version? Finally, you'll be able to buy the Fine Molds 172nd Zero as a regular release kit. And they're not just doing like the same reissue of what was already included in the magazine. They're doing. We got a little bit of a special thing going on here. So now, what's what's new for this version here is we've got. This is kind of like the prototype version of the Zero Fighter. So. Normal Zero Fighters had a three-bladed three -bladed propeller, but the prototype was only a single dual-blade prope propeller. So that's a new, ver new version for this kit, and I think the cowling is going to be new for that as well, if I remember. So yeah, we got the three version and the two version, so and what have you. So here we got over here, we have a couple of Girls and Panzer new releases. So these are some really, really tiny little tanks. Um, I think this is just a reissue of a previous release, but now it comes with some decals and markings to make it as the Girls and Panzer version. And we even get parts molded in color for the red one, it looks like, so that's kind of interesting. And these are going to be out in June, I want to say. Here we have something interesting from Hasegawa. So this is actually based on their older A10 kit. So I do believe if you look closely, I'll probably see, yeah, there's the raised panel line. So it does still have the raised panel lines, but this is like a concept that was never, I don't think it ever made it past like the, the paper, like the planning stage. But I think DARPA at some point had planned to take the A-10, the famous A-10 fighter, and remove the pilot from the equation and just convert it into a drone. So you have just a, just a drone piloted A-10. So this would be an interesting thing if they ever actually end up making the real thing. But if they never do, hey, Hasegawa's got a kit for you and at least... If the real thing never comes to be, then you can always have it in kit form. This will be out in July for a low price of 3,600 yen. Dun, dun, dun. 100% new mold items in the Hasegawa booth, but not from Hasegawa. This is from a little known company called Revel, which is now based in Germany. So it's some interesting stuff. One, one, one that I'm really looking forward to seeing here is the Ford GT race car. I gotta say, this is looking quite, quite snazzy. So they have the body over here separated from the actual internals of the car. So as you can tell here, it's got some nice detail going on. It looks like we got a full engine. This is not just curbside. Really a lot of, a lot of parts, a lot of details to it. And it's actually not too expensive either. They got the price here listed as 4,600 yen. Although that's going to come in a bit cheaper than that. Actually, I think this might already be released. But it does say new tool. Quite nice. Ooh, lots of other stuff. We got some more new tool over there. Showing off the Bow Fighter. Bow Fighter. Actually, I'm, I'm pronouncing it wrong. The Bow Fighter. We got the Bow Fighter here. Coming out in 148 scale. It says 100% new mold as well for this guy. One of those World War II British twin-engine fighter planes. All right, so Hasegawa here. We've they've been doing some a lot of figure stuff lately. A lot of kind of interesting figure stuff. Some resin figures and actually some plastic figures as well. So interesting, interesting stuff. These these are these ones. I'll say that they are going to be resin figures, though. So. Resin, you're going to have to glue it together yourself, and you're going to have to paint it yourself. But hey, once you get them put together, they're quite interesting. You got some egg, 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 uh, plain stuff down there at the bottom too, and you can see on the wall there they're showing off all the different resin figures and the release dates. So we got another. Well, this this high school girl, she's going to be out in in June. She is quite busy with her smartphone there, just like all high school girls are these days. So here we have from Hasegawa, this is a Kanbine, Yama, Yanma, the Yanma Kanbine YH6115. So for all of, the, all of you out there that like to build these kind of esoteric uh, farm equipment, construction equipment type models, Hasegawa has got a new one coming for you. I don't know if they actually sell or use this kit at all in America on the farmers because of course in America we got John Deere and we got Caterpillar and all those famous brands but not sure about Yum Mom. I've never heard about it. Then again, I'm not a farmer. I've never lived on a farm. I'm a farmer. <laughs> My life, I am. 
Farmer Brown, I am not. <laughs> but it looks interesting. All right, but moving on over here. Now this is something I do know a little bit more about, and this is going to be the EP71 Toyota Starlet. So I gotta say right off the bat, I do not believe they sold the EP71 Starlet at all in America. So this is gonna be more of a popular model for Japan, Japan car fans. In America, we did get the KP61 Starlet, which actually is kind of famous for being, it's, it's the same style, it's a two-door hatchback model. The KB, KP61 Starlet was out in the early 1980s, and that, that Starlet featured a front engine, but it was rear-wheel drive, like the later Hachiroka AE86. But after the KP61, I think the Starlet line exited the, Amer in the US, and we actually had the FF, FX16, which was a very similar in style to this EP71. Actually, the, the FX16 looks odd. It looks quite, quite similar, although I do believe they are not identical at all. But it's kind of a cool looking car for anyone out there that really likes these esoteric Japanese cars. Not a, a lot of quite, a lot of nice detail to it even underneath the car there. Another new Nissan kit on the way is a race car, this time the YHB Nissan R92CP. So. I think they might have already released a version of this kit previously, but this is the, a newer version of the kit. Looks like it comes with some new parts and of course some new decals. There we go. Alright, so we also got an interesting looking uh, American, American Coupe Type B with blonde girl's figure. So this one is going to be a re-release of uh, the Hasegawa lowrider kit. Um, it says Buick on the front, I think, so that's interesting. But it, now it comes with this figure, so once again, Hasegawa is kind of getting into this, uh, getting into the figure business here, getting, giving us lots of new girl figures to uh, build. And speaking of figures, there's another new set of girl figures coming out as well and i think these girls unlike the previous girls in resin these are going to be in a small much smaller scale of 124 scale so same scale as as the cars so you can make dioramas with your car models and these are actually going to be molded in plastic not resin and actually they look quite nice i have to say all right kamizukuri some nice diorama paper diorama accessories as the name kamizukuri would up would imply so here we got some nice looking trees there all the all of these uh, trees and whatnot are made out of just paper so you just cut them off the paper sheets and frolic them up to make them look like trees it looks like quite quite nice looking nice and thin they even got proper scales 135th we saw there so it'll be perfect for your dioramas you could do some nice landscaping they even got different types of trees and specific to that type of tree, so you can get re really detailed. All right, so here we go up at, now at the Tamiya booth, and this was a really giant 1 16th scale U.S. Sheridan, which is the Vietnam era light uh, tank from America. So it looks pretty nicely detailed. You got a little gunner sitting on that uh, top turret there. All right, so next up we've got the Achilles. Now the Achilles was the or the British version of the US M10 tank destroyer. So the British took the M10 tank destroyer and they upgraded it with a 17 pounder gun, giving it a bit more of a impressive firepower, which was needed in the Second World War to try and compete against the German heavy tanks such as like the Tigers and the Panthers and the King Tigers and what have you. Not sure not not sure how well these probably survived a hit, but they were able to at least deliver a hit. Alright, so next up we are going to take a look at we've got uh, a light armored vehicle from Tamiya as well. It's one of the Japanese ground self-defense force units there and actually at the show here right out in front They have one of these parked right in the front of the show, too So that was something kind of interesting to see it looks quite detailed if you're into uh, The Japanese ground self-defense force stuff might be something to take a look at all right So next up a little bit more exciting maybe for 
world for German World War II modelers is the Hummel, the German Hummel. So I believe this is going to be using some of the parts from the previously released Nashorn kit. So, uh, but a lot of people are quite excited to see this. I know Dragon previously had released the Hummel, but now we're finally getting one from Tamiya. So it might not have too many parts, but it's probably not as complicated to put together as well. There we got the. Uh, Achilles again, so we're looking at the Achilles here again. It comes, it comes with some nice figures. And one th interesting thing about that Achilles and the, the Hummel is both of these are open top kind of turret tanks, so it looks like they're both going to be coming with uh, figures. Now here's a metal barrel. I believe this probably will be available separately if, if, if to me it holds to the tradition that they did recently with the other car oh yeah there you go metal barrel sold separately july for 1000 yen all right so now we're at the monkey the 125 so the monkey is kind of like a little moped style mini bike now this usually the monkey has a 50 cc engine but the monkey 125 has a, a bit larger 125 cc four stroke engine so it gives it a well i guess you can't really say quite a bit more power but at least it does deliver more power than the smaller 50 cc engine so and it's an it's an interesting bike. I I've never ridden one myself, but I would love to get one just to tool around for tool around in a little bit. Next up here we have the TS O five O or TS zero five O hybrid Gazoo Racing. So this car was the second Japanese car to ever actually win the Le Mans race. The famous Le Mans race. So the first Le Mans winner was the 787 Mazda 787B, which we'll see here in a little bit. But this is the second one, and it won in 2018. So I just won last year. So that's probably why Tamiya really got into wanting to deliver this car as a, a model kit to all the fans of racing. Because, hey, we finally have a new Japanese race car that won something. So this car is a, it's a hybrid. It actually is powered by a... A V6 twin turbo engine, but it also has a hybrid uh, powertrain system. So quite interesting. Got some nicely detailed parts here. Now we're on to the uh, 787 here. So I mentioned previously that the Mazda 787 was the first Le Mans winner for a Japanese car manufacturer. And the Mazda 787 was it. Now this is powered by a massive four-rotor engine and after this thing won Le Mans they kind of changed the rules so that these kind of rotary cars would no longer like properly be able to compete in the series which actually I think they were doing with a hybrid car as well I think maybe they had changed some rules after that one one too if if my memory serves me right here but this is quite an interesting car a lot of fans I've actually heard this car fire up in person when I worked for Mazda long ago Another classic Tamiya kit gets a re-release, re and this is the good old Countach LP500S. So now what's different about this release is it comes with that red body, but it has a clear coat to it. So if you saw in the light there, it had a bit of a gloss to it. So that body that comes with this kit has already kind of been pre-finished for you, so you might not have to go through the effort of having to paint it. All right, so this is the Leon CVS TOS version. Now this is a car that races in the Japanese Grand Touring Car Racing Series. Do they actually still call it that? I believe it's in the 300 class, not the 500 class. I hope they still have those classes. But this was this was from they had a uh, to me had actually re previously released the Mercedes AMG GT3 car. So this GT3 car is now racing in the Japanese series on this under this uh, team Leon CVS TUS I guess it's called. So now they're just re-releasing that uh, previous release but with the decals so you're able to build it as the the Japanese Grand Touring Car 300 uh, series vehicle. <laughs> Escape, escape 
Into a world we don't know Escape Into the great unknown Escape To a world we don't know Escape Into the great unknown Escape Let's escape Unknown. 